super sorry for all the inconvenience, guys. So it's not your fault, man. Yeah. So the thing is, what I will do with the the shading and the hard edges and the soft edges. I know you have the poly groups in 3ds Max, and I'm no, I'm not sure how you do it in Blender, but in Maya there is like only two, re two, two ways you can handle an edge. You can give it like a hard edge or a soft edge, if you see the difference. The thing is, I always like soft out my complete model. So it looks like absolute garbage then. And then I have a script that hardens the edge on each cut, like on every, on every cut for the, for the um, V edge. So there is a script, it's UV hardened, and there you go. This is what you want to have. You want to have like each, or I think like when you have a cut here, you want to have this a pulley group or this, and this a pulley group, this is how it handles it in, in 3ds Max. All right, so I always like lay it out again then, to have it organized, and then I just move it up one, one thing. I do the, the complete layout in the, in the end. So let's move on with this guy here. Um, I have here some mirrored faces because like when you have a when you are the player, you would only see this thing here. So I, I will mirror this over later. Um, yeah, so it's pretty straightforward again. And so I wouldn't cut here anything. I would leave it as it is. I would just make this this uh, thing here more connected and have it like uh, uh, a good straight and square. So yeah, it, it it doesn't work again. So I need to cut it. Then I select all my shells, orient them. Select all my faces and straighten it. And then, so like I wouldn't cut anything here. I would cut it, cut it rather here because you have an, you have the cut of the UV there because when you replay, you would see, you would see the cut here. So, oh no, 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 this is what I, this is what I don't want to do. I want to straighten it again and then it's, this piece is done. Okay. So for, I would leave this as one shell, but I would only cut it like down there. And then I would take this piece here, optimize it, orient it, and put it over here. This goes, I would like make this one a complete shell. Move this one back here. Oh no, this is, yeah, this is what I want to have. This is what I want to have too. And then I just need to cut on the other side. The reason why I didn't mirror this, because I, I kind of saw that you want to have some numbers or, or something on it. So please be aware when mirroring faces and UVs, um, when you want to have numbers, because yeah, most of the time it would look like shitty because it will be flipped here. Okay, so cut this one, like optimize this one and orient it and rotate it. Hey there, buddy. And same goes for this one, orient it. So like I would make this one straight edge and this one straight edge, especially also for this top part this top part what happens in here doesn't really matter as long these outer edges are straight okay so put this one here and same applies for for here so i would cut it here so if you have any questions just just ask them i'm always open
Okay, so I have one up here. And I would orient this this one. I'm doing my straightening again. So is there is there like a similar tool for straightening these in, in Blender? There must be one, right? Yeah, there is uh, one, but it's very complicated. Okay. I don't get it because it's pretty important, like especially for trims and stuff. Yeah. All right. Okay, so what do I have left? We have this one here left. Um, this is also pretty straightforward. We already have this. Let's optimize it some more. Put it, maybe can put it there. Um, what are we going to do with this guy here? So I would like, uh, make it here and optimize it some more and do the same thing. I think this is already kind of squarish, but this always can help. Okay. And same applies for this one here. this one and we got this body here so this is just one shell one simple shell optimize it some more orient it in there you go so this one is also done just unfold it or not lay it out and move it up all right so let's go with this one here. First. Okay. So this can be one shell. Maya sometimes gives like connects these hard edges here, which shouldn't be the case. So this is kind of tricky because it's that it's like that bumpy thingy here, but to be honest, I would cut it here and here again, but it is already cut. So I would like uh, this one too. Let's turn this up for a second so I can see it better. Okay, so this is, This is like one shell now. Oh, this is pretty, pretty cool. This is like satisfying. This is what a 3D artist dreams consist of. So the next one here is oriented. Yeah, this is what we have now. So it's kind of a small workaround. I will make it again with several shells let's try if this one works this one goes so this one should work as well yep and straighten it again there you go yeah let's optimize this one it's pretty easy to optimize and this one again lay it out Okay, and move it up. Um, so th this is like left and right. I would only make one part and mirror the UVs over again. But it's pretty straightforward. So yeah, um, Khan asked if we should flatten out all the islands. I, I, I said before, 
it kind of depends on what is given by the high poly as well. So I will uh, maybe maybe we'll come across some some other examples. I will show it later. It kind of depends, but you you should always try. So I would never like make this trying to straighten or something because it would always give us some some ugly stretching. But I would try to like orient it. This one as well. And then I would leave it. So there there is no need to make it super complicated because it's so small and it wouldn't make any sense. So the same goes. And the same goes for this is on the inside, okay. That's isolated. Okay. This is also done. Hi, Marcos. Hey, how's it going, guys? Um, pretty good. We had a bit of a starting hiccups, but uh, now we are rolling. So let's save. It's always good. Okay. Uh, yeah, so let's move on with this guy here. Oh, I'll need this one. Okay. Now, what I'm thinking is, where should this try belong to? I'm not pretty sure yet. Um, I would, I would make it to do. I will leave it as to this huge island, so this shouldn't be a deal. Okay. So let's move this one together here. Oh no! Ah. This one, like uh, what I wouldn't, what I would avoid is like doing something like this here because this would be bullshit. I would leave it as it is. When doing more and more UVs, you kind of get a feeling what to straighten and what to leave it as it is. So this one can be up there. Unfold, orient, straighten, rotate. I wouldn't cut here. I would just make this a soft edge because uh, it will bake out fine in the normal. Connect this one because I always hate unconnected vertices. Right, Julie? Sorry, man. <laughs> Everything is fine. <laughs> I said that I always hate unconnected UVs. No, wait. I messed up the low poly. Ah, uh, no, no. Everything is fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm kind of concentrated on rendering this stuff because I can't find shit in Toolbag. Like, super weird. <laughs> yeah, as long as you can render in Toolbag and not bake. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so I would leave this as a whole and not cut it. I only give it one cut. Um it it doesn't really matter where it is because it won't be seen anyways because it when you see it it's pretty fast. So I would cut it just right there. And then I would optimize it, orient it and straighten it. Mostly on clean modeling, the optimizing is doing its job. So, yeah, Julia had has no 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 not something like this in it. So, it always does it does it well when you when you do a good modeling in the beginning. Okay, so we can optimize this as well. And this one is here. We might have some better better resolution now here. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So what is it doing up there? Mm, 
we might so sometimes I'm doing some manual pushing like I do it here I would just make it straight on the top and maybe try to make this one straight as well so yeah I think this was is done too there shouldn't be many fixes also here and also yeah this is like just a square might rotate this what is happening here okay so another thing is we could have like load this even down when moving this up but you sh you should avoid these like thin tri bastards because like in the baking it's gonna give you problems okay so what i do as well again as we already saw before i just soften all the edges like this and then i will let it run with my uv hardened um script where it like hardens every uv cut because the high poly is gonna take care of, of this all right so we just need to lay it out again and then we move on I go with right why are you rotating is Kengizan asking me so I think this was like four minutes ago I have no idea where where this was but maybe we will we will find another another example later okay uh, oh this is pretty cool so let's take this one all right, as you can see, lots of islands, lots of unnatural or like organic shapes. So we won't be like here having too many squares thingies, but we'll try to make the best out of it. Okay. So I would leave this as one as it is here and I will make it square like this and rotate it. Oh, I think you mean for the rotating, maybe because um, as you can see it here, when you have different shells and you want to give it like a subtle scratch or something that is going across it and you do it with a texture, uh, you always have to make your work around, oh, did I rotate this shell? How did I, how did I manage it and stuff? So yeah, maybe it was the reason why. Okay, I would make this as one shell and cut it just down there and give this like some sewing, especially right there and right there. Oh, who didn't connect here? I know who it was. Especially here and yeah this is pretty like wobbly but yeah I would leave it as it is now if it gives me some baking errors I, I will try to fix it later but I would leave it as it is because when you try to like give it too much of, of it will be like too much stretching here So yeah, oh, what are these? Oh, they're here, okay. Let's move this as well. And here, okay. So it just doesn't know what to do here. So I need to cut it and also here and I need to cut it as well and need to move it back here. So yeah, this is pretty crazy, but the optimizing and unfolding will take care of it. Um, yeah, you can see. 
so yeah this is also a thingy i wouldn't i wouldn't touch i would leave it as it is it's super small it just gives me some issues later the same goes for this focus here okay so what about four little fellows oh, okay okay so let's try to optimize this one and straighten it optimize straighten it rotate it and move it here okay so the inside is kind of connected completely now i need to cut it somewhere so i will take it here and then the optimizing will take or unfolding better oh no there is still connected Oh, I didn't. Hmm, there are some there are some vertices. Okay, it should it should work now. Okay, there you go. Let's orient it again and leave it as it is. Okay, so I wouldn't stretch I wouldn't make this a square, I would leave it as it is now because it's too big to have this, this, yeah, this distortion. So I would leave it. And yeah, this is super simple. Straighten it, straighten it, straighten it. And this one. Yeah, this would make it, I think, make it straight as well. Oh, okay. So when it's straightening, it takes like the angle of how the vertices are aligned to each other or like the lines are aligned to each other. So when I go with 30, it won't fit. So I will try to make it 15 or something. Oh, no. Oh, 45. Okay. Oh, wait, you got like the angle? I yeah. can't like read the, the words because they're all pixelated. Oh, but it's, it's straighten at straighten UV is what it says here. But like you can set the angle you want to get yeah. the result. That's yeah. dope. Yeah, so switch to switch to Maya. And yeah. So what we have here. Oh yeah. So this also need to be down there because as we want to have as less cuts as possible. Oh, there you go. There are some more vertices. I have no idea where they come from, but we're gonna take care of them. I think they are gone now. Okay. Okay, I think this is it for the piece. So let's like lay it out again and then we'll move on are there any any questions so far then it's perfect okay so this little pin is pretty straightforward i wouldn't cut here i would only cut here and yeah that's it and try maybe make it straight again Yeah. Hmm. Let's try it. Let's try it how it looks. I wanna I wanna know. Yeah, I think this is fine. So I would only make it like straighten here and straighten this piece or just orient it first and then straighten this piece. And then I would only straighten this again and then I would leave it. This one is done. Oh. Oh, and maybe like, yeah, it doesn't matter. You won't see it. Yeah, you won't see it. Okay, what else do we have? We did this one, this one, 
Yeah. This one. Let's move on with this one. So the reason why I didn't like Jolly, I don't know if there is a a text on it or something. So there's a reason why I didn't like let me check because mirror sure. so many yeah let me let me know and then then we'll see i don't remember give me a sec yeah so in the meantime we can unwrap this one so this is a bit tricky because it goes like back and forth and around and many radius and other things so yeah but we'll get there i would cut it here so, no, there are no texts there, but I think you can leave it to one shell without mirroring stuff. Or so you actually, I'll, you already I, mirror stuff? No, I didn't, I didn't mirror anything, but I can do it like in a second, just a second. Like what you prefer. Okay, then I, I will, I will um, give it back. Uh, this is my... Okay. So yeah, as I said, I would cut it down there because uh, then this upper piece is one thing, and I wouldn't have to touch it again. So because when you when you like do this on it and you protect it from the side, you get this. Uh, yeah, like the thing here comes down into this thing when on the on the uv shell i don't know if this makes any sense but you should you should try to to leave space empty here okay say so, yeah Giole, i feel like a teacher now as well when yeah see because no one's talking you're it's like pretty, it's, yeah but yeah that's where it's like, alone. Cool. <laughs> um <laughs> So where would I cut it now? Hmm, this is pretty tricky. Let me check. I would cut it here. Uh, or maybe, hmm. Let's cut it here. We need to have some sacrifices, but this is what we can try. Uh, let me check. So yeah, I know I said before, uh, not that much cuts, but sometimes there are things, uh, yeah, where you have to, where you have to just cut like here. Because it doesn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't unfold in a better way. Then I cut here, here. Do this and see that. Okay. So yeah, I would leave it like this as it is. And now I can unwrap this complete part with the with the part above here as well. So where is this part? And oriented it. Yeah, this is pretty high poly. I could, I could like delete every second edge, but yeah, I will, I will leave it as it is now for, for art reasons. I'll just cut that there. Okay. So this one is done as well. So let's move on with this one. What I do is I, I could like go here, move here, move. But what I do is 
just go there, there, move, and then I just cut here, and then I'm done. Just, it's all about saving time. This one can be one shell as well. And this one can be one shell as well. Okay. That is done as well. There is no need to touch it. So as I as I mirrored something, there will be like flipped UVs. You can see it here, like the the pinky ones. So like these here. And I will create a UV shell for that. Move it here. So these are like flipped and I will flip it again. And I would leave it as it is now. Because then it then I can unwrap the rest better. Hmm. So maybe I can connect this one here. I can connect this one here as well. And then I do the same for this piece and make it a single UV shell. Oh, and then I optimize this one. Mm -hmm. So what this is doing is not that what I want to do. Because you see that ugly stretching. So... Yeah. But let's leave it like that for a moment. Uh, yeah, this is also not connected now. I will sew this one on top. And this one here too. Maybe it unwraps better now. Nope. Um, I think I'll cut it again. I know I'll try to avoid your V cuts, but in this case, I will, I will have to. Okay. Okay, maybe we can have like, okay. This is stealable. Not that, not that happy, but yeah, as I already said, this is a pretty fucked piece with lots of radius and devils and stuff. Okay, so the next one is this part here. This is also tries are always hard to straighten. So like it's close to impossible. What I want what I can try is like leave it as one completely connected shell and then I optimize it like this. It doesn't give me that bad. It gets a stretch in here but We'll we'll try to leave it at, at the moment. And also like this one here. This is also done. Um we need to rotate that and this is also done. Okay. All right, let's move on, let's save. And yeah, as already said, I will make, give this a completely soften again. And then I will let it do its job, like giving each UV cut a hard edge. There you go. And then it will bake right fine with the high poly in the end. Okay, I think we have like, let's move this one. Come on. Let's move this one there. And I think we have most of it. And this one, this one is done. This one is done. Oh, the spring. Let's do the spring, the springy thingy. Okay, like you can see, this is pretty crazy. 
um, what what would be the most favorite thing is to have it like as one stripe, just a single stripe. So what I do now is like I select all the edges and connect it. I know it looks fucked now. I will cut off the oh they are already cut off. So I would like take one edge loop and cut it and then I will see what Maya is doing. Ha, huh, there you go. Oh no, I don't want to optimize it. I don't want to optimize it. I will just try to straighten it. Yeah, this is exactly what what we want to have. Like you, this is super cool also when having a trim or something. But this is not for weapon reasons now. This is just for environment. Okay, so this is also done. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I will need to like soften it again and give it a hard edge. Hard edge here. Okay. There's the cylinder inside. I saw this one. Yeah. I don't need to explain anything on the cylinder. Cut it, optimize it, orient it, straighten it, play it out. Okay, ah, this one. This is pretty cool. I don't know why, I just like the aesthetics of it and it will break down pretty nice, I guess, because it has lots of like bolt thingy on the high. Okay. Yeah, actually, I'm curious how it will render with stuff inside instead of just not having anything. Yeah. Like if yeah. the ray tracing will affect the stuff inside. Yeah, I'm we'll see. Kind of curious about that. Okay, so um, how would you guys deal with this one here? Would you leave it as a hard edge or would, or would you like have a cut here or would you like make this one island? I make this one island. Yeah, exactly. This is what we do. Because when you have like, yeah, Khan also said, I would make it a single island as well. The good stuff, guys. So here and here and here. And then you get those nice triple face stripes. Exactly. So what I would do is like V shells. Uh, there's this cool little thing where you can um, distribute it. Orient it, straighten it. Oh no, this is what I want to have. So the lower side is this one here. Let's cut it there and here. And we forgot this one as well. Optimize and straighten it. There you go. So what about this fella? Yeah, I think this needs to be one island. Would give us too heavy distortion here. And also with this one. Yeah, this one, what we forgot. Okay, come on. Uh, optimize it, distribute it, and straighten it again. Okay. Oh no. We took one one edge too much. And also here.
And also here. What is going on? Okay. There we go. Yeah, and let's take all these fellas here, distribute them, straighten them, and this is also done. Yeah, the same applies for this guy. So I would cut it, I would like, make it like this, make it like this, make it like this, and then I'll get here, 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 cut it, take my three UV shells, optimize it, orient it, straighten it, done. Yeah, and what I kinda do is optimize this some more, and this some more. And yeah, maybe this. It's also done. Okay. Yeah. Let's soften this guy and give it a UV based on hard edges. Or hard edges based on a UV better set. Alright. So this is done as well. So I think we are mostly done. What is this guy? Ah, uh, this is like the trigger mechanism. Do we have it in the high? I'm not that sure. I didn't look that much on the high. Just... Yeah, we have one. Okay. All right. Let's unwrap this one. Yeah, this is this is super straightforward. We could even like make something like this. But yeah. Wow, we saved two polys. Um So, I will try to orient it to the edges. This can be optimized, straightened. This one here as well, and this one here as well. And this one, yeah. All right, done. So now I think the most hardest part will be the main. Mm, let's save. So let's grab this one here. Okay. So like, would you guys cut here or would you leave it like it is? Uh, I will cut. Okay, you would cut. I, in my opinion, I wouldn't cut, but um, you can do it like what how you want it to. Especially, I wouldn't cut also right here. I would leave it like as one single shell. Maybe if we don't get too much distortion here, but I think it will be fine. Also, hmm. I'm okay. So after seeing this, I would, I would, I would cut here. No. Okay. I would leave. I would. I would. I would cut. Like here. Okay. So this gets one part. Okay, as you can see, this is what we don't want to have going on here. Okay, this is fine. Um, come on. I think we need to cut. Hmm.
Let's just connect this one here and we'll see how it handles afterwards. So I wouldn't cut here because it's always in the face. Of, it, it's not really in the face of the player, but like it could be seen by the player. I, I think... would always cut here. Wait, I think in the eye poly I did uh, a cut. Like oh, you have a cut. Okay. You have like but... two parts, right? That are, that yeah, are like exactly. together. But the problem is that I don't think I did the cut in the center. Because uh, in the references, it was like kind of shifted a bit to the uh, to this left, I think. Yeah, yeah, you cut it. And I don't think you have an edge there oh, also. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Low poly. Okay. So I think you could add a cut there, but I don't think I have a cut on the, like an edge there on the low poly. Okay. So maybe if you want, you can add it and just add the cut there. I no, think. I think it will bake out fine. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I would cut even more. And maybe cut here as well. And this gets one part right down there. As well. Hmm. The mo the most thing that concerns me is like this edge becoming to a soft edge right here. So I'm actually thinking that we could make this as one shell, like this one, and have it like here, and also coming together on top. So. Let's optimize this some more. Oh yeah, this is what I thought. So I have no idea why Maya is doing this. It should be like completely straight now, but when having like the connection, like like this, this top here, it always disturbs it. So I have no idea. But yeah, same can... in Max. Same yeah, in Max. Same, I have no idea. Too. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I think it doesn't know how to calculate the like the bending or something this is pretty funny so yeah, i don't know every time you like have these rectangles with holes in the middle uh -huh. it's a bit weird it should be like yeah. pretty straightforward to be honest but it never does its job so yeah, yeah. i'm kind of i'm kind of cheating here a bit with uh, doing some manual straightening and yeah it's not a big deal also, these are on the same levels. So, Chiole, I think your chair is doing some funny noises. Yeah, dude, that's why I asked you the other day uh, which one you use. Because, wait, I mean, which, I which, cha which chair are you guys using? Because I think, I assume you're always sitting on the, at the TV or, or at the PC all the time, like me. and. You need to take care of your bag. Uh, IKEA, Marcus, I think. Marcus. It is Marcus. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want also to take because yeah. I heard a lot of people telling me that uh, gaming chairs are not so good, like for your butt sitting so many hours. You, you will sweat so much that you will think you think you will, you were made out of water if you buy a gaming chair because they are <laughs> all fucking leather. Oh, I have a gaming chair without ladder because I would sweat as well, as you said. Yeah, you're true. Oh my god. I have a gaming chair also. Marcus is amazing, by the way. 100% yeah. recommended. Okay, that's cool to hear because I was really thinking about taking that one, actually. Okay. Do it. So Marcus Pluto is amazing. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so yeah, uh, same goes for these guys here. I will optimize them first, orient them, straighten them. Yeah, and also... goes for this. 
I will need to take a look where it, where I cut the other two. Um, oh yeah, it's it's above. It's not above. Perfect cut. Move. Yeah. Okay. So I think this one. Oh, this one. Hmm. What are you doing with this guy? Ah, let's cut here and leave it as it is. So, Marcus, you are working in Blender, right? Yep. How are you? How are you doing with it? I, uh, I, uh, did you switch from another software or? Yep, I switched from 3ds Max. Ah, okay. So, how was the switch for you? Was it easy or? Uh, I take this very hardcore because I install Max and start blending in another day, so I have no choice. <laughs> Just uh, did it, you know. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but it's a uh, very complex in the beginner because in the beginning because the navigation is very different. I think it's the most frustrating thing in the blender. It's the navigation. After okay. you uh, used to be used this, I think it everything's alright because it's yeah. the we use all the basic tools, so it's very easy for us. Yeah, yeah. Mostly it's like the same in every program, but you need to know how to do it and. Yep. Yeah. In two weeks, I say I I am very comfortable with Blender. Okay. Okay. Uh, so yeah. Uh huh. Well, this is the inside. I can cut here, like not wherever I want, but I don't need to take care of like. Uh, your B cuts and seams and stuff. I will just make it make myself a bit a little bit easier, like the faces. And move this here. Ah, oh, there it is. Come on. Cut. There you go. Okay, this is one shell now. Oh. Okay, so let's straighten this one here and straighten this one here. And we might need to move That one a bit and that one a bit. And also straighten this back here again. And also down there. And also here. Okay, and also there. So, all right, so. So I think, Jolie, I thought about mirroring this one, but I think it is not possible because you have some cylinders in here, but We'll try to make it pretty, pretty small so it doesn't give us any any big text density. Uh, you mean like the interior? Yeah. Yeah, scale it down like a lot. One pixel. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> no, but I would say like 70% also, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Okay, so let's cut here again. Mm. 
Yeah. This is also a piece that has many, many back and forth and round and going and stuff. Yeah, so this can be, it, it, like the inside doesn't really matter that hard, so it can be, can be on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, optimize it, orient it and move it there. Okay, so yeah, let's just fix this part here. Are you guys playing Cyberpunk? Is any one of you playing Cyberpunk at the moment? Yep. Not at the moment, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> you do, okay. So like, most of the people in here are doing it. It's so good, yeah. Are you playing it on, on PC or PlayStation or something? PC. PC, okay. Yeah. I played on the PS5 and it's okay-ish. Like I heard it's on the on the base PlayStation 4, it's pretty bullshit. Okay, so just finish. Cut this one here and cut it here. Then move it here. Save for a moment. Yeah. Yeah, so I would I would leave it as it is now as well. So this does its job pretty good. So yeah. Let's move this right over here. This is done. I think this inside here is done as well. Yeah. So yeah, let's speak about the outside some more. What happens if I... Okay, like this can be up here. I think this is acceptable at the moment. Um, yeah, but I would cut it like here and there. And as it is over here, I know this is a one little bullshit shell, but this giving me some distortion. I want to avoid that. All right, I think this does a pretty good job. It's just a big butterfly, but yeah. This is already still connected on here. I don't want to have that. I want to have it like a separate shell. Cut and also cut it here. And connect it back on. All right. So go to your big brother over here. And okay. Mm, yeah, this one is pretty straightforward as well. I would like have a single stripe for it. Cut it here. And 
and orient it and straighten it. Move it over here. Okay, what about these small little bits? I don't want to have them. Hmm. But I think I need to have them. But let's orient them and give it some straightening. Okay. This one here, let's let's cut it here. Pull it back on. So yeah, I know uh UVs can be sometimes a bit straightforward, boring. I mostly listen to music or have some have some music in the background or YouTube in the background or watch some Mandalorian. Oh yeah. I have to watch in the last episode. <laughs> oh yeah, I have to watch it too. Thanks for reminding. Oh this You know what happens when I do it like optimizing again? It gives me this, but so yeah, actually I'll... the body here it's quite tricky overall. Yeah, it has like so many bevels and cuts and everything. yeah. Sorry for that. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not your fault. It's the it's the weapon's fault. Like, why are you so complicated? Yeah, actually, look at it. At it at first, it looked kind of simple, but. It was not so simple after all. No, it wasn't. I guess that. So there is like some things going on. Okay, so we have this one. Okay, where is uh, sometimes you lose your mind where 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 up and where down is. So orient, straighten, rotate, perfect. So how are you guys laying out your UVs? Are you, like in the end on the on the final zero to one space are you doing it with uh, some cool scripts or are you doing it by hand and boggling and i use um, reason uv and it just oh. by hand how is how is the reason uv is it good when it comes to this yeah it's good as fuck man really really good it's very smart he's back very well you just need to do some small adjustment by hand but it's very smart okay Okay, so I think I need to get it. That's cool. I always thought about that, but a couple of months ago, UV Packer came out like for free, and I think there is also for Blender. Let me check. Okay. I don't think it's also for Maya. So that then, when you guys using Rhizom, what I'm doing is now pretty old schoolish. Compared to Rhizom and just pressing a button, right? But are you doing your layout, like the cutting and stuff I do also in Rhizom, or I just do the packing in Rhizom? Sorry, what did you say? Are you doing also the, the lay, layout, what I do now, but not, not just la like layout, like making the UVs and cutting? I don't know. And... I, I just do the packs on Ryzen. I you cut everything in Blender and send to Ryzen and just pack it. Oh, OK. OK. You send like an FBX to Ryzen then? Yep. Blender has a bridge plugin, so ah. it's very quickly. Just one click, it send, and pack and back easy again to Blender. Easy, easy. Lemon easy, easy. Uh, really has... easy, easy. <laughs> UV Packmaster 2, it's uh, paid add-on and very useful. Okay. Sounds cool. Mm. What are you doing with this guy here? So let's optimize this some more.
cuts. So yeah, I think one day everything is automated, like we don't have to do all of this mind-boggling work. Sometimes mind-boggling, sometimes pretty satisfying. Which one is right now? Sorry? Uh, right now is which one is this actually? What I'm unwrapping? Or what do you mean? Like what, what is what right now? I mean you uh, say about it's mind boggling in UV mapping. Sometimes yeah. it's boring. Sometimes, Some, sometimes it's, it's sometimes it's, it, it's kind of. Um, what is it right, right now? now? It's yeah. It's not that hard for me right now, <laughs> so it doesn't give me any errors or something or any non-manifold fucking bullshit stuff. So yeah, okay. So let's cut it here and. So I think we can make this one as well. Oh no, we can't. But let's do it like this then. Da, da. Okay. Hey, Luca. Our English, our Italian friend. Hey, Chris. Hi, how are you? Uh, it's going good. Going good? Okay. So what I do now is I will just like optimize this again and try to, try to, um, yeah. It gives me this weird thingy we had we had like before, but I'll try to optimize it some more. But yeah, there is some like unfortunate straightening needed again, but it's kind of do does its job. So Giole Luca is a is a is a is a, a environment artist who worked with me in Munich for a for a VR studio. So maybe you can speak some some magic. Oh really? Him. To get, yeah, but to get our, to get did I hear correct? Company. Are you Italian too? I'm Italian. Yes, we worked together for like three months or so. Yeah, it was quite was was quite fun. That's cool, because I don't know too many Italian people doing this kind of stuff, so that's cool to know. Yeah, because I'm also Italian. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I I can I, I can see that Joelle as well. Yeah, Joelle. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, this is some ugly thing I'm gonna do now, but it doesn't like help now. But you won't see it either way, so it doesn't, I don't care that much. So yeah, what else do we have? I think we are mostly done with the main things here. Let's optimize this some more oriented and Set it out and also for this. Yeah, this is okay. So, all right, let's pack this back up. Okay, so the inside will be scaled like super, super small before baking. So let me check if we have everything. So let's save. So the trigger is done, the chamber is done, barrel, bottom plate, internal cylinder, 
rear pin trigger mechanism, rear side spring, little cylinder, bottom hook, hooks, hammer, and the main thing. Okay. So. I will first like try to do it with uh, the normal layout thing and then I will like scale something smaller and then try it again. So normally it would like I would like try to trick around some more and but I don't want to waste any time. So yeah. Yeah, I will pack everything in one area. So I think, Jolet, jo I think like this part moved a bit. I'm not pretty sure at the moment because it. Yeah, if it's, it's intersecting, it's yeah. right? Yeah. A little bit. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Then, then I need to also move the high because I moved it before. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Kick goes a fi. All right. So yeah, this is not the best result we have at the moment, but I will like, there's a trick. I will scale the inside pieces now that are not that, that that scene. Um, some more down. Uh, yeah, I think this is mainly it for the first time. Like, surely you said about 70%, right? Yeah, because it will never be seen. So, yeah, that's perfect. And then I go here and go to modify layout. And then I preserve the UV ratios and lay it out again. Oh, doesn't preserve anything. Okay. Hmm. Ah, then I know what I gotta do. So let's take our three little friends, move them over here, make them smaller again, and then we'll fit him fit it in somewhere else later on. So this is not the way I would do it like in real life, but uh, I'll, I'll do it now for like showing stuff and also the baking later. Um, I would like try to get the most out of the space. But I'm not using Rhizome at the moment, but um, yeah. Okay. So let's. Can I think, Jolly, we can even make it some smaller. Yeah, because. You'll never see them, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this like this thing is the most important one here. Takes like a quarter of our we could even think about like making this pretty small. So to get more out of the other UV shells. How is the textile density on this one? 15. Okay. So we give like everything a textile density of 15. What about the springs? You won't see the springs as well, right? Also not. One. And also like this one here. Like it takes lots of space, but you only see the part, front part of it. So, um, I wouldn't make it that small as it is now, 
uh, as the other parts are now, I would just make it a bit smaller. Yeah, but this can be optimized some more. So don't take this as a reference for like laying out your stuff. So we try to get the main thing even bigger now because we have some, some space left. Okay. And now we try to fit in this, this small pieces here. Mm -hmm. This is like Tetris. Okay, this can even be rotated as long as it, as it, as it has any information on it. Do you see any space where we can fit it? Ah, yeah, got it. Okay. Okay, so as a checkup, I smooth out all, all my, my, my thingies, and then I harden it again based on the edges. Same goes for this one. So I'm pretty, I'm, then I'm sure that every, like, every cut is hard. And then we can move on with the baking. All right. So what I do is I select like my bow, high and low poly. Export them. The artists, where are you? There are you. And export them as a FP45 understore and call it complete. Like because it, it contains the high and the low poly. Then I go to normal set. Okay. So I remember said there is this little cool tool here. It's called Baker. You open it, it's a bread. Then uh, the quick loader is pretty cool. I just load my FBX. I export it. It's this one. And it takes like the naming convention, low, low, high, high, low, low, high, high. Oh, I might, I'm, I'm thinking, oh, just. Just a second. I need to sign a new material because it has the UV now. I don't want to have it. I call this FP45. And I also gave like some, some pieces the red material so I can bake out uh oh, I can give this someone as well. I can bake out a ID map for Chiole. Oh yeah. Are you guys using UV ID maps? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. I I sometimes find them pretty handy when when like um texturing. So I'll just make a new scene because I didn't do anything. Then I go to the quick loader. 
I load my complete file. How do you want your textures, Jolie? Um, as PSD, I'm I mostly bake in PSD. Um, with uh, sec with uh, sec sixteen bits per channel and yeah. Yeah, actually, I don't know the difference between all the the stuff. Um, I just know that JPEG is shit. So go yeah. with Targa or PSD. That's fine. Yeah, I go with PSD. Okay, so. I go with samples 14 and soften I go 12. Soften means like when you have the low poly here, it softens out the edges over the like the normal map. I think the 12 is pixels or 0.12 is pixels. I have no idea how much, but it it makes the it makes the the edges of the of the baked textures a bit smoother. Okay, so I fixed my mirror, mirror tangent as well. So yeah, and this is what I have for the normals, for all the, t for the maps I'm baking. Thickness is not really needed, but I, I'll turn that off now. My curvature, sometimes I bake the curvature in Painter because it gives me a smoother and better um, result, but um, Marmoset is getting better and better with the, with the curvature. So I will leave it on now as well. So for a resolution, I always bake in 4K, like if needed, if when doing personal work, I always bake in 4K, but when, when, the, when the final texture is authored at 2K, I will leave it at, at 2K here as well. But this should be like a cool, cool looking gun. And for the output, um, this is where it saves all my textures. I just make a new folder, call it baked textures. And put it in there and call it like bake fp45 and then it gives like bake fp underscore 45 normal ao and etc okay so here here you can turn on the high and the low you can see it right there and yeah let's save the scene like baking fp45 save it and then we'll hit bake <clears throat> oh wait the few times i try to use the the preview button what what is that doing you mean like... the preview button here or what did you press like this one yeah exactly that one uh... And it kind of baked all the stuff and also put the material on the low poly with the bake yeah. already on. You I don't think... do that usually. No, I'm I'm not doing that because I I mostly have a, a material assigned to my low poly and then I give it like yeah, I do I it by myself by hand. I, I like I know what I'm doing here and then I go to normal okay. and then I so let's see. For the baker, I mostly, oh, I should have used Marmoset, but let's see how it looks. So let's see. Oh, there you go. So I always try to make it a bit glossy to see like some, some stuff that is going on. Oh, this turned out pretty nice. Let's give it also the IO. Okay. So I think we didn't know we didn't have any. So what you can do now is to get a better result is to paint the skew. This is what I always do when like having some fake normal information on it. I I I just paint over it. It it cleans the normals and makes even a better effect now. As you can see. And I always mostly bake in Annie's house. Make it a backdrop brightness of pure black and then yeah. I mostly get my my desired feeling. You can also like you hear this you have to look right here because it's gonna make a huge difference now. See? 
like I can show you the the difference again. Like this is without skewed. When you just brush over it, this is what you can't do in Marmor uh, in in Substance Painter. So when you like skew here, it gives us this really really nice effect. You can also see it like here. You see, and also here. It kind of it kind of cleans the the normals. It makes it like. In the face it the right direction. Yeah, also here. Uh yeah, here as well. I think we backed it. We had it in the in the low poly as well. Surely I think I put it out because yeah, I saw no need to have it. Oh yeah, easy. Perfect. Uh yeah. Also here and here and here. And here, yeah, and done. So we can also go with painting it, like make the, yeah, there we go. Holy, I love it. Yeah, I think on the other side, I should have put some geometry inside those holes, like on the other yeah. side of the body. Yeah, I, think I should have put some geometry, but so well. let me bake again. I will set it to marmo set. Because like you see, it has no real Norman information. The map is inverted. Was it flip X flip Y? Oh, because there we go. I I I gave the AO my normal map. <laughs> All right, so like we need to look at this piece because it's pretty pretty dark in there, and what we can do, and it also needs some some offset now. Like what you can do is go bigger with the with the cage it's creating. So it gives us this better effect now. And also it's pretty small. Um but we'll leave it like like it is when it comes to you to the UV size. But what we can do is we can exclude it when ignoring groups. Um what it does, it doesn't bake any AO on it, so it doesn't inter intersect like with the with the main piece here, because the main piece is, piece is getting a huge shadow on this. You can also see it here. So, also see it here. So, especially you would like put this this here on for parts that are moving, because when this one is moving and it has like a baked shadow on it, this this wouldn't make any sense. So, I don't know like how the how the gun is function because I didn't build it. But Giole can t maybe you can tell me what is moving so I can like turn that the the baking shadows on. The the hammer goes back and rotates. This one. Yeah, exactly. This one can be excluded. Okay. This and one? That, that thing you just selected goes up, so that one also moves. This one. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. that's pretty much it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah, I will, I will yeah. also oh, the trigger. and the trigger uh, is also moving, so I will also exclude this. So we can turn on our main again and rebake. So 
Yeah. Hey, Chris, can I ask something? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, you just remove the pieces that will move it from the the groups to bake yeah. the AU? Oh, okay, good. Because um, I don't want to have shadows on it because when they move, it would look weird when having shadows and like, you know, like the trigger has yeah. a shadow in here and when it moves, it has a shadow, you know, it wouldn't make any sense. So this AO, it's compensated on the engine or it's, uh, you know what I mean? Like he, when we don't have the AO, we don't have the contact shadows, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's why, that's why I'm think like, that's why I'm excluding the, because I don't want contact shadows on things that are moving. Yeah. Yeah, but how you compense this on the with the our rest of the piece? Ah, uh, you wanna you wanna you you thinking about like generators that use the the contact AO yeah. like in here? Yeah. Um. That's a good question. I I'm I never had like a big a big deal with um. Yeah, with with not having them, but. Uh. I will. I would. I think it wouldn't like affect that much on it because especially with the AO generated things, I would go pretty, pretty, um, yeah, subtle because you, you would like always see it when you have, I know there is dust coming in here, but I would try to keep it really subtle. So I think it wouldn't, I wouldn't depend it on much on the AO. So I would leave it. So in my, in my case, it doesn't make, um, that but much of a difference yeah okay i got it thank you you're welcome and we can also paint the skew here yeah now that i look at it, it looks like a rock more than metal yeah i know i know yeah sculpting scales man yeah okay so i think that's mostly it for my side um so after this, I will rebake again. I will like mirror over all the all the UV, mirrored UVs. We didn't mirror that much. We could have done some more, like the inside could be mirrored, and yeah. But this was more of a quick tutorial how how to do the how to do the the UVs and baking. So Thanks, thanks guys. <laughs>